For more from East Rutherford, we head right to the site where our senior NFL insider Josina Anderson is standing by. Uh, Joe, you know all fans do it. You go down the schedule preseason, you win, loss it. I don't know if you could find me a Giants fan that saw 5-1 and one out of the gates for this football team. It's been spectacular and a tip of the cap here to Brian Dable and the culture that he shifted. In your opinion, how has he been able to shift that culture so quickly and effectively? Well, he brought the juice from Buffalo, and the fact is he has the credentials offensively with what he did with the Bills. And if any place that I detected it was during training camp, it was emanating from him because, quite frankly, I felt like I was still, like I said before, learning the names on the roster mm. and probably still doing that when I'm trying to figure out who these wide receivers are <laughs> that still end up getting the job done. But it really is a testament to the offensive creativity from Brian Dayball and just how he still is able to create space and, and create scoring and move the chains despite the fact that many people couldn't list the first five wide receivers on this team. So you really have to give them credit for that. And I just think it's just so amazing too. Uh, you know, just looking at the health of Saquon, he looks like a whole new person mm -hmm. coming into this game, I believe, with 233 rush yards and what have you. So he's really done it by making uh, everybody accountable as far as it doesn't matter if you're not a big star like Victor Cruz or Odell, Be Odell Beckham Jr. He expects you to fight like you're the first person on the depth chart even though you're the fourth and he's and he's hard on them you know because I was reading about even how he's hard on you know the tight end uh, Bellinger wanting more out of him particularly with the wide receivers out from this game so uh, Brian Dayball bringing that bringing that oomph bringing that juice bringing that accountability to this team and I got to say one quick thing Musso during the game, uh, I tweeted, man, it, it seems like the fans are zoned out, even though they're four and one. And a fan retweeted uh, <laughs> back at me and he said, that's because, you know, we don't really believe they're a real four and one. Well, guess what now, Musso? They're five and one. So uh, <laughs> quote, they're five and one. Quote, t <laughs> quote tweet that. Uh, Joe Cena Anderson, <laughs> yes. always bringing us the latest from mm -hmm. the front lines. Joe, we got to talk about uh, the Ravens side of this conversation as well, too, because it's another fourth quarter lead squandered. Uh, Lamar with the giveaway late that really set up the late touchdown by New York. What is the sense that you're getting from Lamar Jackson? I know you talked to him post game. He's more frustrated with himself right now than anybody, I am sure. But what sort of is the air right now as they again let one go in the fourth quarter? I mean, it's tough because, you know, you saw him sitting by his locker, which you would expect just taking the game in. Um, and when you know you have that type of, you know, skill and you have that type of talent and you want to be able to put the cape on at the end of the game and, and it ends with a, a strip sack and Leonard Williams recovering and especially, you know, with the defensive coordinator that used to be that on your team, dialing it up for you guys, it's frustrating. But even Kayvon Thibodeau said it after the game, you know, we were counting on Lamar to hold the ball long. We were counting on it to be able to make plays after he double taps on the ball, figuring we had the time to create the pressure and the hurries. And for Kayvon even to get his first sack of the season, mm. <laughs> you know, and for it to really seal up the game and not allow Lamar to drive down the field and get the touchdown that they needed, especially after Justin Tucker missed the field goal. It was definitely a sight to see. But here's the thing. Spoke to Calais Campbell after the game, spoke to Lamar briefly also as he walked down the tunnel and came towards, um, you know, and exited out of there. And it's they're three and three. You know, it's mm -hmm. a long season. They're three and three. Their bye comes at week 10. They'll be fine. Joe Cena, we appreciate you as always wishing you safe travels and mm -hmm. let's hear it. Giants fans. Come on. <laughs> you gotta believe, like you believe five and one. Believe five and one is a heck of a start for this team, especially when you go up and down that roster and you scratch your head and wonder where it's coming from. They're also doing it in dramatic fashion. Three, ten or more point comebacks in their first six wins. Uh, the Giants, hoping that they can make the playoffs and not suffer the fate of the 2000 Chiefs and the 2014 Eagles. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.